Hello. My focus today is how can we increase renewable energy production with acceptable impacts on biodiversity. And my answer is environmental design. And I will explain for you, give you some examples on our approach on how we uh, move on to environmental design. Let's start with the species. Renewable energy production affects several species. Birds, mammals, fishes, insects, and also people. Human dimension are crucial in this matter. We are working with several energy forms, primarily hydropower and wind power. And uh, let's go to the river first. You see a meal of salmon, and if you're going to eat salmon like this, you need energy. We have been studying salmon for several years, and now we are trying to apply our knowledge uh, about salmon into the regulated rivers. We are looking for bottlenecks in the salmon's life, we are looking for better mitigation efforts, and we are trying to get a win-win situation between salmon and energy production. So that's the first example of environmental design. Let's take a look at the salmon. It's a very exciting species with a complex life cycles. One part of his life in the river and one part in the ocean. It starts in the river and it stays in the river for one, two, for two, three years until the salmon is getting a teenager. It's going out to the ocean on the party, uh, eating and growing bigger and after one to three years, he returns back to his home river for spawning. And that's the cyclus of the salmon. We are looking for bottlenecks in the salmon's life. And we try to, to look at the bottlenecks together with the way uh, the industry are managing the regulated rivers. And the central question is how much water, when do we need the water, and at which temperature. And our goal is to get a win-win situation between salmon and energy production. Let's go to the wind park and the wind energy and wildlife. It's my second example. This picture is from Smøla. It's a small island uh, at the Norwegian coast in the middle of Norway. It's a wind park uh, driven by Statkraft, and we have done several studies there on wildlife, mainly on birds. And maybe the, one, the most famous bird is the white-tailed eagle. What we have learned in Smøla is that the wind turbines and bird, birds are site-specific challenges. The, the landscape, uh, the area where the wind park is sited is very important due to conflicts with birds. Another lesson learned are that uh, it's uh, a species and a seasonal specific challenge. The bird behave different 
Each species has their own behavior, and they also behave uh, different at different uh, periods in the year. We are using modern technology in our studies. Uh, you see a radar that we uh, collect or mapping the behavior of the birds, and we also use satellite colors uh, at the bird where we can uh, sample side positions, where they, uh, how they uh, spend their lives. Our lessons learned can be uh, summarized as SSS, Site, Species, Seasonal, Specific Challenges. And important is to find the right position of the power plant sites by very high quality pre-constructive studies. We also have to know very much about the target species. And if it's possible, uh, identify and remove other mortality factors like power lines. One concern I want to tell you is the total impacts of several wind parks. In Norway, there are several uh, wind parks planted all over the coast. This picture shows uh, the eagle, white-tailed eagle, marked in Smyrna, 59 species, uh, and how they spend their, uh, their lives or how they uh, uh, they migrate. This is young birds. When they grow older, they are more stationary. But there might be some challenges uh, uh, regarding the total impacts. So this has to be studied more. My last uh, example on environmental design is hydrobalance. And as you can see, I've marked with a question question mark, because we haven't studied enough yet on this topic. There are several knowledge gaps. How does the frequent changes in the littoral zone in the reservoir affect the produ productivity in the, uh, the water in the reservoir? How do we uh, take care of the spawning areas for the fish? when you change the water level? What about the temperature and ice conditions? And finally, do we risk spreading invasive species when we pump uh, water upstreams? That's also que questions that we have to study more. Uh, I'm going to summarize. How can we increase renewable energy with acceptable impacts for the biodiversity? That's, that was my question. And my answer, environmental design. But there are also another uh, answer that has to be uh, focused on, and that's society's acceptance. We, we have um, uh, designed a kind of receipt for this two uh, matters, environmental design and society's acceptance. And one word first, cooperation. It's important to have good cooperation. We have good cooperation today between the industry and the scientists. When I'm talking about scientists, it's uh, several disciplines that's necessary if you are going to find the best way to produce renewable energy. Biologists, technologists, human scientists, economists, and hydrologists. But there are several uh, instances that you have to cooperate with. Import, very important, the stakeholders. You also have to include the authorities and also the NGOs. This is crucial. Uh, we have a very good uh, platform for this work in, uh, in Norway. It's called CEDREN. We are working, looking for 
uh, environmental design projects and we are dealing with human dimension. Thank you. <laughs>